Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel for the newcomers. My name is Didi, born to be free, of course. T-shirts available in our shop, guys, doing this recording from the rooftop because it's really windy. The moment I will walk here, you can see like everything here is like windy, 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 windy. Uh, when I'm here, not because I'm behind the wall. That's why I'm recording here. Five amazing Bitcoin charts, one very special chart that will show you something really cool that's going to happen in 2024, but also in 2028, but also in 2032. And we can show some levels that will make you really excited today, guys. Of course, also talking about the news because there is a war starting and what will that do to Bitcoin? A trading tip, a travel tip, and of course, an inspirational quote. Let's quickly jump into the charts, like into the charts, <laughs> to show you exactly what is happening with Bitcoin today. Bam. The first chart for today, guys, the four hour chart again. Look, this huge wick here to the downside. It's a big wick, guys. Huge wick, smaller body means upward pressure. The bulls are fighting the bears. We want to go up again. Here again, we can see a huge wick to the top. Here's where the bears start to fight the bulls again. You know, they want to push the price down. But look, this this area from 61K all the way up to here to 65K. That's beautiful 4K with candles over there. Um, this candle is going to close in 43 minutes. Let's see where it will close. Uh, hopefully it will close above this red line, which is the main area now of resistance over here. It's 63, 200. If we break that, we could take it here to the top of the Bollinger Band, 64K, 300. And then even here to this next area of uh, 66K, where will be some res resistance again. So this is a beautiful moment, yes, um, that you bought that dip, that you can see we are going up again. We are around 64K. Beautiful market structure being built here by Bitcoin. If we zoom out, we look here at this um, daily chart. On the daily chart, we can see also that that blue line that I drew a couple of days ago that I told you, hey, that will be the next uh, support level. Look, if I extend that blue line with these dots over here, you can see that we are hitting that next support line. Why is this blue line not as far as this green and the red line? Because that blue line is a weekly chart line. We are now on a daily time frame, but the blue line is representing a week. So it will only do it when the week is closed and the week will close in 16 hours and 42 minutes, I think, I believe. Yes, something like that. And that week, of course, is going to close on Sunday. So uh, that will take some more time. But when that week closes, this line will be extended with darkish blue to these levels because that's around the trajectory it's going now at the moment. And that would mean that we are finding support over there at that level. That candle here, beautiful candle. Uh, the body needs to go a little bit higher uh, for this to be also a very bullish candle. Again, large way to the bottom and we want to go up. RSI, we can see that one here on the bottom. We almost bottomed out at that dotted line and we want to reverse on the daily. Also here the MACD, the red bars are becoming smaller. We want to see a reversal, guys. Beautiful times to be in Bitcoin. Don't freak out, but zoom out. Don't cry, but buy these dips. Now let's jump into more interesting charts. This is the first interesting chart. Here we found a fractal. A fractal, this is the chart here of 2021. It's the bull market of 2021. We can see that we have a blue square, a pink square, and then we can see this area over here. Now, look to the chart of today. This is of 2024. The blue square looks almost exactly the same than the one over there. The pinkish area also almost exactly the same than that one over there. Then after that pinkish area, we had a massive run here as well, a massive run. We pulled back to that black line over there. We are now pulling back to that black line over there. So this is almost exactly the same. If we would repeat this fractal in 2024 now that we did in 2021, then there is a massive run coming that would bring Bitcoin way above 80K levels, guys. If we do exactly the same, we could go sideways for a couple of more two-day candles because it's two-day candles and here is one-day candle. So that's the only difference, okay? The one day in a two-day setting. But these two-day candles could take like five more candles, 10 more days before we have this massive run again in Bitcoin. This is one of the possibilities. It's not the cleanest fractal because we are comparing a two-day with a one-day chart over here. But still, these fractals sometimes do play out and they do look like each other. If we would have put this one on the one day, then this pinkish box would have been a little bit wider. And this one also a little bit wider. 
and this one also. But if you look to the resemblance, there is a beautiful resemblance that could lead to the next push. Now, then we have this chart. This chart is showing you how many dips we already had now during the bear market bottom. Of course, that bear market bottom is completely left here in the bottom, 15,800. The first dip that we had was 22%. The second dip we had was 20%. The third dip we had was 22%. Then another dip of 21%. And this dip at the moment is only 16%. So you have survived until now already one, two, three, four huge dips. And this could be the fifth huge dip that you're surviving during this bull market. This should show you every time when you dip, you were doubting, oh, should we sell? Should Bitcoin, is Bitcoin going to go to zero? Every time when we dip, you had that same feeling. Now, after having that feeling for four times in this bull market, you should understand now that it is a normal thing that's happening during every and each bull market. These dips are for buying not for crying, I will keep repeating it. Here we can see the Bitcoin minus balance. Uh, this one is completely different here in 2017. There was a huge balance around the halving. Then after the halving, the miners start to sell, but then the Bitcoin price went massively up. If you look at halving three over here, there was not that much Bitcoin on the balance of the miners during the halving. But then after the halving, it took a little bit. And then from that moment, we went massively up. The miners kept hodling their Bitcoins. The moment we reach the top over there, that is when the miners start to distribute your Bitcoins. That's when they start to sell the Bitcoins. Now, at the moment, we are just before the halving. There is now 217,000 Bitcoins uh, collectively owned by the miners. And the miners are split up between small um, miners, like 0 0.1 to 1 Bitcoin, uh, will miners, 1 to 100, 100 to 1K, 1K and more minor wills. So we can see now that we are in this area before the halving, just like we were here before the halving, um, which could mean that the miners stop selling their Bitcoins from this moment. We are slowly increasing, and that could lead to the miners holding their Bitcoins, which will lead to even more and a bigger supply shock than we already thought, because the miners will then hold their Bitcoins, not sell them to the market. There is no other Bitcoins coming to the market. Only the exchanges can, uh, of course, offload some of their uh, Bitcoins, but that's also not many Bitcoins. And when the demand then keeps growing because of the spot ETF, the retail stepping in, etc., that could lead to that huge supply shock. If the miners keep holding their Bitcoins, so this will go up, you know, the balance will go up, the minor balance. If that will happen, there is not many Bitcoins to be sold. When the demand will grow, there will be an explosive move in the price to the upside, of course. Now, this chart should be giving you a very calm feeling. This is the halving price regression chart, the HPR, which means the first halving, we were around $12 over there. The second halving, we were around $650. So that's times 53 of the first halving. So that's 652 times 13 uh, gives us this 8.6K. This is all calculated by this logarithmic regression formula over here. So that would lead to the next time times four, which would mean this halving, if that would be around 50K, we are already higher, but that would normally be around 50K because it's six times 8.6K. The next time would go times four, which would mean the next halving we could be around 220k and the halving after that could be around 690k so that's how you zoom out if we keep doing what we have been doing but even calculating the regression within that by using this logarithmic regression formula then the next halving we will go times four which would bring us to 220k in 2028 and halving after that times three, which would bring us to 690K in 2032. So every and each Bitcoin that you're buying today around 60K levels would go times four or maybe even times 10 in total if you have the patience to wait another eight years. That is how you zoom out in Bitcoin. I hope you really enjoyed those charts, guys. Yes, in the short term, it's beautiful to see that volatility play out, but also beautiful to see that support at 61K. A lot of people start to buy Bitcoin, but I will come back to that later in this video. Uh, in the long term, we just need to zoom out. Did you see that? The next halving, we could be around 220K. And the next halving after that, we could even be way higher. 
And that's why you zoom out. That's why you look at the bigger picture. Beautiful, the short-term volatility. Beautiful buy opportunities because of these dips. But if you zoom out and look to your capital in the long term, four years from now, 2028, the halving could be 220K per Bitcoin. That would mean the amount of Bitcoins that you buy now times four. That's a shitload of profits. That's 400% profits in four years' time. That's 100% each year. There is no other asset that will give you that return on investment. There is no other bank that will give you interest of 100% a year. It's just impossible. The only real hardcore investment should be a deflationary asset like Bitcoin. Long-term store of value, the gold of the 21st century, the digital gold of the 21st century, guys. The next halving, we could be at 220K. We are at 60K now. That's almost times four. That's a lot of profit. That's why you zoom out. Look at that bigger picture. Buy Bitcoin during every dip for the long term. If it is your first bull cycle, I understand. You will sell around that top. Exchange into stable coins. And then you will buy back again in 2026, seven bottom to increase your Bitcoin portfolio. But then you play the same game. From that moment, you zoom out and you wait and you lean back till around that half and 220K and that next stop even 500K or maybe 1 million US dollar. And then again, the same. Exchange into stable coins. Buy back at the bare bottom. Every time, again and again, the same cycle. We are now halfway the cycle, nearing that halving. That halving is going to happen in a couple of hours. I think it's 14 hours when I'm recording this video. From that moment, yes, we can still see some dips. Stop crying. Start buying. Because it won't take more than two, three months before we will be way higher than these levels now. Which also brings me to the trading tip for today. The trend is your friend. As long we are in an upwards trend, which means higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, we are going bullish, upward. The trend is your friend. During these periods, the best thing you can do is longing Bitcoin or adding to your portfolio or putting in some longs. Shorting Bitcoin against the trend is very difficult and you will lose a lot. You will be liquidated every time again and again because it's not easy to go against the trend. That's why you say the trend is your friend. So when we go up in an upwards movement of a couple of months, make sure you only long Bitcoin. The moment we create a lower low and we reverse the trend to a downwards trend, that is when you start to short Bitcoin. That is the way how I do it. And I believe that's the safest way to trade Bitcoin. Not always shorting and longing in the upward trend, longing in the downward trend, shorting. The travel tip for today, guys, is when you're a Bitcoiner, use your Bitcoins. Book your flights with Bitcoin. There's a couple of websites that you can use. For example, Travala.com, Travala.com. I don't know how to pronounce it. Travala.com, something like that. In that website, you can book flights, hotels, everything that you normally book on Booking.com, you will also will be able to book on Travala.com directly with Bitcoin. And I think 40 more different currencies, also USDT, etc. Then there is also AlternativeAirlines.com. You also can book with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies over there. And then there, of course, is CheapAir.com. CheapAir.com, you can fly all over the world all kinds of uh, airlines and you can pay with Bitcoin. I think also Litecoin and some other cryptocurrencies. But I think Bitcoin is the main payment tool at cheapair.com. So there's multiple possibilities to use your Bitcoins to book for flights and hotels. Why would you still use fiat currency? Support the network support the miners, support the community also through using Bitcoin. So whenever you are going to book flights, please use one of these three companies. There is no chilling referral links. Yeah, I think there is. There is one link, I think, to Travala down below the video. If you use that one, I think you get like a $10 or $15 bonus or something. Uh, just check the links down below the video. The other websites, I don't have a link to, but you can just uh, find them yourself by Googling cheapair.com or alternativeairlines.com and you will find a cool way to book flights with Bitcoin. That's what you should be doing as a Bitcoiner. 
Then there is two questions of the followers that I'm going to answer. One of the questions was, Didi, do you also like the old old proof of work coins like Litecoin, like Bitcoin Cash, like XMR, that's Sumeru, uh, beside Bitcoin and Doge that I already mentioned, like these proof of work coins, do I also like them? Yes, I do like them. I do hold a lot of Litecoin already since the beginning because I really believe that Litecoin was like the silver when Bitcoin still was the gold. So I'm still trusting that Litecoin could do well in the future. I know the price is not doing what it should be doing, but still Litecoin is giving me the possibility to do a lot of cheap transactions all over the world. That is also why you can see that the Litecoin blockchain is making new all-time highs if you look at the amount of transactions being done on a daily basis. More people are using Litecoin every year over and over and over again. So yeah, it's still a valid investment for me. Bitcoin Cash, of course, I got a shitload of Bitcoin Cash because of the hard fork, but I also invested in Bitcoin Cash because I do believe that Roger Ver is a very smart guy and I do believe that there was a huge fight be between him and Jimmy Song and all those Bitcoiners about the block size. And if you look at Bitcoin Cash, essentially what it did is making sure that there would not be control by the huge investment companies and the rich people over the world and to make Bitcoin still a peer-to-peer -peer cash. I think Roger at that moment already understood if we continue the path that we're walking, then the normal Bitcoin would become the digital gold of the 21st century that again then would be taken control of or controlled by, that then again would be forced into the hands of institutional investors, governments and all that stuff. So then the traditional idea behind Bitcoin being a peer-to-peer -peer cash would disappear it would become the gold of the 21st century, a very robust and safe store of value, but that would mainly be used again by the rich people. While Bitcoin in the beginning was targeting the poor people to make it able for them to join the economy because there was now a cross-border worldwide blockchain that everyone could use. Peer-to-peer -peer cash Bitcoin, that's also what's stated in the white paper. So that is why I think Bitcoin Cash could still be an important role in the future. When Bitcoin becomes that digital gold, the store of value only the rich will own and use, then maybe Bitcoin Cash will become the Bitcoin that people, the poor people in the streets again, will use for transactions. Or Litecoin, or Monero, or Dogecoin. We don't know. But I do believe that all the proof of work coins are way better than all the proof of stake coins. I'm a proof of work guy, not a proof of stake guy. So yes, I like all these proof of work coins. And the second question, I heard that question now many times, is stating that the sound of these videos is not like balanced correctly, that there is a stronger sound in the left ear than in the right ear. I don't know how that is possible. I'm using the DJI. Uh, this is a wireless DJI kit. It is one of the best ones out there. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm doing something wrong in the settings. I need to check this. But if I record mono, you will only hear sound on one side. Now I'm using the mono smart uh, setting, which means it distributed to two sides, but apparently it's doing one side stronger than the other side. I need to check how I can solve it. If somebody knows how to solve this with a DJI wireless set, then please let me know. I really don't know how to solve it, and I really want the sound to be perfect for all of you guys. So that was the answer on those two questions. Let's jump into the next part. The news for today, guys, is that the Bitcoin hodlers, the Bitcoin hodlers, the ones like me, they added a shitload of Bitcoins to their accumulation wallets during this dip. 1.7 billion US dollar worth of Bitcoin was added to the accumulation wallets. We can all see that in these charts, what is happening. It is all data, it is all trackable, because why? The blockchain is transparent. So we can see that exactly 1.7 billion worth of Bitcoins was added to this long-term accumulation wallet. One of those wallets is mine wallet. I've been sharing with my VAPs. I'm adding more Bitcoins to my portfolio at 63K. I'm adding more Bitcoins at 64K. I was adding more Bitcoins at 61K. I will keep adding Bitcoins during these dips because I truly believe that Bitcoin is the best asset out there, best store of value, but also best asset. Our core capital is in Bitcoin. So whenever I earn money, I will keep it in USDT till I see this dip and I will start accumulating Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin in the end will do 10,000 times better than any other fiat currency. I don't want to have inflation. I don't want to be paying more and more and more of my fiat currency for the groceries. I want to pay less and less and less fiat currency for the groceries and that's impossible because there's an inflationary system there. They will keep printing fiat and that is why your groceries will be more expensive expressed in fiat. In Bitcoin, 
I'm using less and less and less bitcoins every and each year to pay for my groceries. Deflationary. So I will store my capital in bitcoin and will be adding during all these dips. And that's also being done by the smart investors and of course by the whales. They are now adding 1.7 billion during the last dip to their accumulation wallets. That's what you should have been doing as well. And we're gonna end this video today, of course, with the inspirational part. I hope uh, you enjoy this one. It's not a quote, but it's just like a thought that came into my head this morning. Um, whenever there is a problem, whenever there's something you need to solve, and you don't know how, or you're afraid uh, for the results. So that's the moment you're like, nah, maybe I should not do that. Maybe I should just uh, do the normal stuff. That is the moment that I always think about the worst case scenario. So whenever I'm doubting about doing something, and looking at it and thinking, what would be the worst case scenario? What would be the worst case scenario? And then the moment that I realize what the worst case scenario would be, I become very calm. I'm like, okay, is that everything that could happen? Like, it's with the smallest things in life. Sometimes people think like, ah, should I, should I wear a cap or a red hat or a red jacket when I go out? Uh, maybe people will laugh at me. What is the worst case scenario? <laughs> the worst case scenario is that, yeah, people laugh at you, people point at you, people start to shout at you. Does that hurt you? Or does that make you feel like very special because they all give you attention? The worst case scenario is that the outer world will laugh at you and will make you ridiculous, but that doesn't mean it needs to do something to you. You as a person maybe will grow because of that because of all those insults and all the laughing, maybe you will be laughing as well. Maybe you will just enjoy a stroll and think, yes, let them laugh. I will do whatever I want to do in this world. And of course, that is a simple example. And there is a shitload of other examples I could have used, but I think it's very important that you just realize whatever issue you're walking into or whatever problem you're running into, always think, what is the worst case tonight? What will happen in the worst case to me when I do that? And maybe that will calm you down like it just calms me down as well. And yes, of course, there's also examples that that doesn't work. Yeah, if you're going to bungee jump, the worst case scenario is that the cord is too long and you die. Of course, <laughs> you won't get calm because of that. Or if you play, jump out of an airplane with a parachute, uh, the worst case scenario is that the parachute doesn't open. Yes, of course. Uh, I understand that, yeah, then you won't calm down, you will die. So that's why I'm talking about just the normal case scenarios. You know, whenever you think, oh, should I go traveling now? Should I change my life? Should I break out the hamster wheel? What is the worst thing that can happen if you do this? The worst thing that can happen is that you really don't like the new lifestyle, that you really don't like that new country, the new situation, that freedom. And the thing that you do then is you go back into your hamster wheel and you go and run that hamster wheel again. That is the worst case. That is how I mean it. And of course, not with that airplane jumping stuff and all that stuff. I know that's really worst case scenarios over there. But with the normal stuff in life, like decisions to quit your job, to go and travel, to do something else, a new passion, a new job, a new hobby, the worst case at that moment will calm you down. Now, that was everything for today. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy the video, then give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What do you think about the charts? What do you think about the tips? What do you think about the worst case scenario of watching this video? Give it a thumbs up. I wish you an amazing Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I will try to do some lives this weekend again, but I'm very busy at the moment. That's why last weekend I didn't do lives. I will try to do a live this weekend. Thank you for watching. I wish you an amazing Friday. See you tomorrow again. Bam.